So I came here because I was injured in the U.S. Embassy bombing and um, I was coming for treatment. So that's how I landed here. So immediately I glued my face on the window, that's when the bomb went off. I had a deep cut on my face, on, above my eyes, so I couldn't see. I was bleeding. So she pulled me all the way to the stairways, but everywhere we stepped was dead people. Because I knew I was pregnant, and I told the watchman that was there, if my baby dies, you will give me another baby. So he took off and he let me go inside. So it's a plea from us for the U.S. government mm -hmm. to compensate Kenyans. Actually, they already paid the Americans. Yeah. That means we can call it discrimination. See how many people we are here? If anything like terror happens here, only Americans will be compensated. Kenyans will not be. Yeah, check my one too. Ladies and gentlemen, Karibuni Ndani Kenya Marekani. This is a platform where we highlight a lot of things uh, basically affecting Kenyan immigrants here in America. And we are always in Seattle, Washington. Leo, Kutembea Kuingi Kuna Mengi. We have a guest here from Pennsylvania. And tell us your name briefly. Uh, Caroline Mutoka Wavai. Uh -huh. Yes. How long have you been in America? Since 2001. So that's about 20, 20 years. Hey! When a veteran? Veteran. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. I mean, how was it coming those, those years? Man? Well, it's been a challenge. Uh, I didn't even go to the embassy to get a visa. Yeah. So I came here because I was injured in the U.S. Embassy bombing. And um, I was coming for treatment. So that's how I landed here. You landed here in DMV direct? No. Yeah. I went to Oklahoma City mm -hmm. because we had an exchange program with the Oklahoma City bombing victims who in return came to Kenya to visit the other victims in Kenya. So, so that's how I came here. So you were in, in that bombing, in that cooperative building? Yes, I was on uh, 19th floor of cooperative building and I was seven months pregnant Yeah, before it hit. What? Yeah. First of all, we thank God because you're here. Yes, 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 we thank God. How was it on that day? You know, uh, the bomb blast of Kenya is so deep in my heart because that 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 was on my birthday 7th august okay okay yeah. well i went to work like any other day and um actually that day i had spoken to my boss and asked her for um some time off but um, my sister was doing a program that forced me to go to the building and i had a four-year-old son who told me that morning Mom, do not go to town. Don't go. My son cried so much. He was four years not to go to the city. But at least I went there and went to the building. And for the first time when I was walking between the American Embassy and the cooperative building, I stood there and looked at the Ufundi cooperative. And I looked at it for, for several minutes, but I didn't know what was going to happen. That was the last time I saw that Ufundi standing. That Ufund was totally demolished. Yes. Most of the people who were there died. And even that, now I continue to go to my work. So around 10 a.m., we had a commotion outside. Mm. And you know, the banks and um, the teacher service commission, they were all on strike. So actually we thought that was their commotion. So my, um, my workmates went to the window. As you know, cooperative building was all glass. And they went to look. And because I was seven months pregnant and I had my computer in the front, it took me a few minutes to get up and go around to get to the window. So when I got there, I said, uh, you've seen a lot. Let me mm. see. So immediately I glued my face on the window. That's when the bomb went off. I was thrown over the desk to the floor with so many cuts on my belly, so many cuts on my head. And the building started shaking. And I thought that was the end of the world. So we said our last prayers with a colleague, and then we went quiet. But in a little bit, she told me that she could hear people walking. So I told her, if you cannot pull me, I will not come out, because I had a deep cut on my face, on, above my eyes, so I couldn't see. I was bleeding. So she pulled me all the way to the stairways. But everywhere we stepped was dead people. 
because people had fallen down and on the stairways people were falling over there so if you missed your step you will step on a dead person or you'll be the next victim so it was terrible wow. yeah, it was how, many, how many people were total were, uh, died on that day about 213 kenyans died and about 5,000 were injured those were not working for the embassy how was the evacuation that that time i don't know if you were so advanced in terms of taking people to the hospital and helping them it was terrible like for me i got into a matatu that broke on my way there were no ambulances you took yourself to the matatu yes i took myself to the matatu and all the people that were running we were just running to any vehicle that you see on the road so we didn't have any emergency response there were no vehicles Yes, and all the hospitals were full. So I that's, that's Kenyatta now we're talking about. I went to Nairobi Hospital. Kenyatta, they were saying it's packed. M. Pisha, they were saying it was packed. Actually, when I got to Nairobi Hospital, they had already blocked the, window, the doors. And they told me that uh, there's no space. So I entered by force because I knew I was pregnant. And I told the watchman that was there, if my baby dies, you will give me another baby. So he took off and he let me go inside. When I got there, there were so many bodies on the floor. So um, people who had gone to hospital that day are the ones who were teaching us. They had run out of gloves, out of anesthesia. It was so painful, you know? Yeah. So I'm hoping right now the government has um, improved on emergency mm. preparedness. How, how did you deal with that mentally? Recovering, not just on the, your injuries, but your mental health? It's been terrible. When I came here, the September 11th occurred, and I was about to go back to Kenya. So I couldn't get on a flight. So I had to stay here for over and over because I was so scared, I was traumatized. Yes. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. So uh, there was a, an initiative for the government to uh, pay back uh, some amount. Did it ever happen? No. The U.S. government has not paid us, and that's what we are crying for. For 25 years, we've been asking for compensation. The reason we ask for the compensation is because this was not our target. This was targeted to the Americans. And then the American Congress or government created a fund that collected money from the terrorists that injured us. So that money is still there, but us Kenyans are excluded from that fund. So today I came here to ask President Ruto, when he meets President Biden, to plead with him so that he can authorize or endorse or whatever he can do to make sure that um, uh, they amend that act mm. so us Kenyans can benefit on that. So many people are totally blind, mm. children are not going to school because their parents died, or people were fired because they could not function anymore because they got injured. Yeah. So it's a pathetic way people are living today. And at the back of our minds now that we know there's that fund that we can benefit from, we feel ignored, we feel um, abandoned. So it's a plea from us for the U.S. government mm. to compensate Kenyans. Actually, they already paid the Americans. Yeah. That means we can call it discrimination. Mm. But we don't want to go there. We just want them to peacefully compensate us. Mm. Yes. Wow, 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 yes. wow. Oh my goodness, that's, that's, that, that's something. So uh, do you have a, a, like a group, a following? Uh, how do you make sure that the people you are with in that uh, ordeal are still covered or they are still going on well? Actually, like today, I posted, we have a group that has 847 victims. Either they lost their parents or either they are totally blind or they were injured or they lost their jobs. All those categories, we have them in a group called uh, Information Center. That's where we post most of everything that is happening. Mm. And we actually approached the Senate. The Senate has debated this, and they've seen the need for the U.S. government to pay us. Yeah. In fact, last week they concluded their report. Uh, they gave a, a progressive report that should be taken to President uh, Ruto so he can take with him to President Biden. We see this as a golden opportunity. Mm. Yes. 
Wow, wow, wow. So, are you going to raise your hand up when, whenever there is a question to shoot this question? Yes, and I hope they will. I hope they will give me that mic. You come ready? Why I came here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Wow. Hopefully, there's going to be something out of uh, your awareness, you know, to just bring th that out. And I believe the senator and the ambassador will be here. They are Mary, Meg, Meg Whitman. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, my goodness. That's uh, quite a story. So, uh, uh, do you have other members that are also in America? Yes, actually, they just called me. They are following up. We have about 21 uh, victims who are in different states here in America. We are in a chat. We always talk. Mm. And we are really striving and hoping that this can come to an end, yeah. that the American government can accept because this is justice denied, mm. you know. So we are crying for justice. Are, are you like their chair lady? Well, they call me international coordinator, convener, because actually I'm the one who took this matter to the parliament in mm. Kenya. We had been forgotten for 24 years. And then when I speak about it here in America, they ask me, what is your government doing? Yeah. So I went to my senator, Honorable Agnes Kavindu. I told her how much we are suffering. Mm. Actually, I told her, 2012 but she was not a member she was not a senator then so now that she's a senator she took that matter to the senate they debated it and now they've pushed it and we are hoping we will get paid wow. the senate of kenya has done marvelous mm. so it's actually for the president now to, 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 to sign the bill yes wow. no no to put it to the um President Biden. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Which is going at the end of the week. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. That's quite a story. Uh, any last of words you want to say to our viewers? Yeah, I want to say that uh, this bill is not only for the victims. This bill, see how many people we are here? If anything like terror happens here, only Americans will be compensated. Kenyans will not be. So I'm calling on diasporians. When we start coming to you to ask your senator, because this will go to Congress, it will be a debate. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking all the diasporians to support us. And when you support us, you are supporting victims that are in Kenya, that were going to their normal duties like us. Mm -hmm. You know? So let's all get together and support each other. And also when you get time, you can reach out to those victims. Some of them call me because they don't have medical. Yeah. And there's a lot of need over there so in case i reach out to you i'll be coming for you so you can support those victims yes thank you so much again for stopping by mkenya marekani uh, uh my prayer also is i'm joining you that you people must be compensated and it i hope it happens even from the conversation that we have today yeah so thank you so much our viewers God bless you. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mkenya Marekani. If you have any story, any business you want to promote, talk to us. And uh, definitely, we have a very huge, wide audience. So, keep it locked in Mkenya Marekani. God bless you.